Welcome to Saving the Cabin, and today, as you can probably guess by right here, I'm putting in a window. So, I kind of technically already started this video, but changed my mind part of the way through. I had told myself to save money, I was going to use the panels that were already here, the panes of the glass, to rebuild a window and be able to uh, use the same existing window and save money. When it got down to it, with the fact that I broke two of the panes, well, technically I broke one pane, one pane already had a crack in the corner, and all the intricate little pieces that needed to be bought of like the wood make it look like a window, you know, all the little beveled edges, it was going to be almost about a hundred bucks. And I had told myself it needed to be done because this was not a standard window size hole. Um, it's a really odd measurement, definitely not a store-bought window. I think its measurements were 33 and 5 sixteenths and 39 and 13 sixteenths in size. And of course, after I buy everything, Jeremy goes, well, why don't you just frame it down to make it a standard size window fit? I don't know why that hadn't dawned on me. But again, that's why we make such a good balance, because if I don't think of something, he may, and vice versa. So in a second, when I get started, I'll show you removing the window, and then we'll just go straight into putting the new window in. And you can see my lovely trash bags, just trying to keep the insects and the animals out for a couple days while I was getting the window and getting everything ready. Because of course, the same day, my catio came, and the cats needed a catio first. <laughs> And Jeremy still won't be back for a few more days. He has been in New York City working on a mafia case, so definitely check out Exploring with Nug for a case about a body that Roy DeMeo helped dump. And if you don't know, he killed like 200 something people for the mafia. Crazy. But we got a tip about exactly where the car was, and what do you know? They found the car. So you definitely need to go check out that channel. And for those of you wondering about, how do I know about how to put in a window? I don't. I've been watching lots of YouTube videos like most people do. Um, I figure at the point when we are able to add on to the cabin in a couple years, we will most likely get all the windows replaced anyways and make them very efficient. So this is just to get us through, have water not come in, have bugs not come in, even more. And I am definitely the type of woman that where there's a will, there's a way. and. I'm gonna figure it out. I really do not have a clue what I'm doing. Well, I take that back. I have an idea about what should happen. I've just never executed that before. So this definitely could be a trial and error. Fingers crossed it works the first time and everything goes as planned, but I'm fully mentally prepared that I might screw something up and have to go back and redo it. What happens, happens. And I need to get this bad boy in in the next, oh, three hours because we are supposed to have some heck of rainstorms going through. But it was so good. I curved my language on that one. I used the proper word so you don't have to hear the meow or the bark sounds that we keep adding to videos. I do have a little bit of a potty mouth sometimes. But aren't construction workers known for that? <laughs> and if you're wondering the price difference, yes, I was going to spend about $100 and a lot of labor to be able to get the window panes put back in correctly. This was, I think, $209 for the pre-made window, but this is a double hung window so it can open and shut. It has insulation to in between the glass panels, so it should help with the temperature in here. And it has one of those neat features where the windows tilt out for easy cleaning, which this other window, the only way to clean it was from the outside on the roof. So, yeah. All right, let's figure this out. So I realized as I got started, I should be filming. Go figure. I'm going to take this window out. It's already kind of on its way there. And I'm going to try to see if I can save this window, maybe make a new frame for it, put the glass into a new frame. We'll see. I have no idea what I'm doing. So follow along to see what happens. <laughs> but as you can tell, I put blue tape on the panes. I'm gonna do the same thing on the top section too. Um, and I'm going to run some tape all around just so nothing can fall and shatter. And then I will yank this bad boy out and start kind of dissecting it and seeing if I can recreate it. Let 
maybe I do need to take glass out first because it's fallen. behind it. It's not wanting to fold. Please don't chatter on me. Oh, there goes that wood. Okay. I need a third hand. Okay. This was good in theory. Did not work. brackets up there. That's the only reason it didn't fall is there are two brackets on the top. So there's a bracket right there and a bracket right there and that's why it hadn't fallen. So there we go. The frame is out. The panes are on the ground and against the wall. Let's see if this is something that can be saved or if I just need to bite the bullet and buy a new one. So we know I like to throw in the interesting creatures and bugs and different things that are apparently very prevalent around here. So I want to show you this monster-sized moth. It's not a lunar moth or a luna moth, um, but it's incredible in size. So let me show you. All right. So this is a normal size moth, you know. We all have them when they open up, they're a little bit bigger than a quarter. And then we have this. Look how beautiful. And remember, these are my two inch rails. So he's showing his wing is about two inches. And of course he came in because that window is propped open. So I will make sure to release him before sealing up the window. And for those of you that are curious what I'm dealing with here, this piece right here, which is at a different level than the rest of this, this piece right here is where the window actually sat and it stopped up against here. But there's this big gap here where water could just come in between the cracks and go down, which is really bad. So I wanna make sure to peel this up and, and put the weather barrier that I have in between and also make sure everything slopes down away from the window. And luckily, no one's home in our little nest here. There's a lot of staples. It's a nail? The hinges that they put the window on with, I guess maybe so it could tilt out for air, was screwed in with one screw but nailed in for the other spot. And because of the outside trim hangs down, it's hard to be able to get the screwdriver to. Luckily at an angle I was still able to get the first screw out, but this is going to have to be hammered out. Let's see this one. Alright, these are both screws. Not gonna work. Did you see? I got a handy dandy little tool belt. Oh, and they stripped them. Okay. Hammer it is. This piece up here is going to be hidden. So I don't care if I end up cracking the little edge of it off. 
because no one's going to be able to see this little piece up here. <laughs> the nail's still up there, but I got the hinge off. And I'm gonna go through, there's staples on the inside and on the outside a little. I guess all that insulation they had up, the plastic sheeting that looks like it was everywhere. This is going to be on the inside of the window frame, so I can't hammer it into place just to get rid of it. Because you'll still be able to see it. I guess it wasn't on the outside. There's just a couple little nails that need to be taken care of. It's all on the outside here. God, they stapled like I would have stapled. <laughs> that if you need a staple, you need 10. And then of course my plastic bag, window covering staples are also in here. So I just added to it. And all the nails. So you can see how many nails and staples I pulled out. The majority of them are not mine. Like mine are these itty bitty ones right here. But I think there's only like three or four of mine in that whole pile. Goodness. How level is it? So overall, that part of the window where the window actually needs to sit is not bad. Just slightly off. Just has to raise up. We'll say about a centimeter eyeballing it but this part of the window right here which will be on the the window sill will actually sit on it and you won't ever see this piece it's so bowed you can see underneath it but the front's not too bad so i'll just add an extra shim on that side to uh help oh look they staple <laughs> There are staples all along here. They literally stapled it to the roof. Okay, you know, each throne. Oh look, and here's a little pack nail. As long as I can get underneath the edge of this. I mean, you do what you gotta do sometimes, I guess, right? So I'm gonna need it to be about 37 and three fourths. Tall. And we have 39 and a half that we're working with. So an inch and three fourths needs to be added on to the top. And then how wide? Thirty-four inches wide. Alright, let's see if they fit. Say they do. <laughs> One in place. Wind blew in. I mean, I appreciate the breeze. So I told you those storms are coming. Really not fun. It's literally not hitting anything. I'm gonna see if a four inch might grip something. So for giggles around this edge right here and at the bottom of this piece, I'm just going to throw a bead of silicone lining just for some waterproofing, especially down towards the bottom. I 
get a lot of questions about how do I know there's not electrical run in certain areas. It's very obvious. Through these grooves, I can see things. I know how things run. I know that the power comes across the bottom and up for the outlets down below. And the light switches and everything else are way over there. There's no electricity run on this side. I can see it through the walls. So trust me. All right, my wood is exactly the same, but there's almost a one inch gap on the other side. <laughs> Just under an inch. Time to make a filler piece. If you could only see this side so easily. It's so much prettier. There's already nail holes in it. It makes it easy. Test out the side. So with the guard and with the shims, this should be the right size. Awesome. Oh. So for 38. And a hair over 38. We're going to be fairly level. So to make the window level, three pieces, one piece for each side. So this is a sealant tape. I've seen in every video, someone did it every different way possible, it seems like. Uh, no one did the exact same method. So I'm not too worried about the fact that it has to be specific. It just, they said you have to build from the lower part up. Since the edges have some weird funky pieces, I'm going to put a coating of this on each corner and then do the wrap, like similar to what most of them do have done. Kind of like a average of what everyone has done. I'll put all that together. All right, so I have the water protectant in underneath the shingles, my shim pieces to be able to keep it level or in place. Time for the top piece. I'm gonna try to do this from the inside. My mind tells me it would be easier from the outside, but then I have to crawl through the window before getting it secure to be able to screw it into place. So I'm gonna go with a little bit harder, just so I don't have to try to climb through the window. Try it again.
All right. Went to Home Depot. The window where the seam for the two pieces meet, the piece never got flattened down, so it was jammed inside of it. And so, new window, we're ready to put it in. It would be my luck, huh? But, I know what to do. Yeah, I should have shown the top, but it was all, all pretty tight already up there, so. direction. And in the distance, I see the dark clouds. I could see them when we were coming back from Home Depot. The last piece that came with the window, at least. There we go. It is in. All right, I'm calling it a day. I know that the waterproofing border will keep the water out for what we need until we are able to put trim and other things on the other side. There is no point in trying to caulk and all that stuff on the other side until I get more trim and things like that to go out there. And for the inside, I'm going to leave it roughed out like this. Once we come in here to fix up this room, then I will worry about making it pretty. Ooh, got sweat dripping. It's awfully darn humid and hot. Um, I did confirm on my way to Home Depot, it is 93 degrees outside with overcast. And if you can't tell by the sweat ring, about a million percent humidity. And while we're on the talk of temperature, let me add in real quick. A lot of you keep suggesting that I put a fan in here. Have you seen how dusty it is? I would not be able to breathe at all without having a full face mask on 100% if that was on. I would rather try to breathe than have a fan on. I can tough through it. Luckily, um, little known fact, with my medical issues, I actually, it doesn't feel that hot to me, I just sweat. I can't tell temperature correctly. So right now it feels like it should be, we'll say 80 degrees or so in here um, or even outside. Um, so I definitely have to rely on thermometers because I can't tell what the temperature is. Um, it's great for baking. I can pull things out of the oven without mitts. Um, I do get yelled at by friends a lot that see that or my husband. Um, but it is nice just being able to pull the muffin right out of the oven, out of the pan. <laughs> but luckily my body, even though I can't tell what temperature it is, my body knows what to do. My body knows to sweat and it does plenty of that. And I think probably because I, I am on blood pressure medication, I probably get a little bit more sweat. That's common with blood pressure medication. So I just take it as it comes and temperature be darned. And since I know a lot of the country is in a horrible heat wave right now, I really shouldn't complain about the temperature. Um, I just complain because it makes me sweat. I, and again, like I said, I don't feel it. I just, I hate being sweaty all the time. <laughs> I'm a girl, what can I say? But a girl just did that. I thought I was done, but I can see a little light gap on the, this corner right here. I am going to go ahead and caulk on the inside. I'm going to do that real quick. All right, now I'm done. So thanks for joining me, guys. Bye.